What's good, you guys? It's your boy, Jay Freshman, back with another tutorial. And honestly, this is going to be like, it's going to branch off from the mixing series that I'm recently doing right now. But it's also going to still, you know, um, come together as well. Because today I'm just going to be talking about, like, just finding ways to get around certain things. And what I mean by that is, like, what I really mean by that is, like, instead of, like, let's say you don't have a good air, quote unquote, you know, people always tell you have to have this kind of air for music or you're just not a musician. And it really doesn't work like that. What I realized, and this is going to be crazy, um, but I'm just going to admit it anyways. So I used to live in Hollywood back in 2016. And I remember I was making a beat and a friend of mine, he came to me and he like well he takes Adderall because you know he actually has the ADHD and he's like hey bro take one of this like it's gonna make your beats sound a lot better or whatever or enhance it or whatever and um I was skeptical because I'm like I don't, I'm not on that pill shit G like I'm just if it's we if it's not weed maybe a little Hennessy on a rare occasions but I don't branch out out I don't branch out to anything else. So, but what I realized when I took the Adderall, at first, like, I always had, like, this insecurity of that, man, my ears ain't that good or because my mixes is not coming out that good. But when I was off the Adderall, I realized, dude, it was only focus because Adderall, if you don't know, for people that have ADHD, it makes them very focused. And um, people use this in school, you know. I realized growing up, like, it was so hard to pay attention in school, and why was it so easy for other people? Most people was on Adderall, believe it or not. And I'm not just trying to make it downplay anybody that wasn't, and they was just really, truly smart. But a lot of people was definitely on it. And, you know, not I'm not trying to influence you guys. I'm not telling you guys take Adderall. I'm just letting you guys know my story in the background because what I'm about to explain in this video is all going to come together and make sense. So when I took that Adderall, I realized it really wasn't my ears. I was just not as focused. Like I thought when I'm making a beat, I'm relaxed and, you know, that I'm drilled in because, you know, I'm working on a beat that I'm focused. That doesn't necessarily mean you're very focused. You feel me? So, you know, just taking that made me realize, like, God, like the mind could achieve a level of focus that I never thought, you know, never thought that, I won't say I never thought that it didn't exist, but I definitely didn't know that my focus could um get to that point. So I don't take that shit. So don't, like I said, I'm not influencing anybody. I don't take that shit anymore because what I realized, you know, this after I took that, it's like, man, I remember just throughout that week, I kept asking him, like, hey, bro, let me take another one. <laughs> you know, shit kind of got addicting fast, and it does get addicting fast, and there's a lot of side effects to it. And on top of that, like I said, I don't want to be vulnerable when it comes to music. I don't want to have to feel like I have to drink to make the perfect hit or smoke to make the perfect hit or, you know, take Adderall to make a, the best sounding mix. So I already I, I cut that out. So I don't take that shit no more. So it's coming back to what I'm saying now. As much as you think, oh, you're just not hearing the mix. I would say you're just not focused, you know. And what I mean, you're just not focused. is like when it let's let's say when it comes to frequencies and you're trying to hear a certain frequency, but you just can't pinpoint it. So part of it is that you probably can't hear if you haven't trained your ears. But for most people that have listened to a lot of music, you should be able to kind of distinguish what a high frequency is, what a low tone is, and what a mid frequency is. Like, I'm not assuming. Like, come on. you If you know what an 808 is, then you know that it's a low tone. If you know what hi-hats are, then you know that's a high-pitched tone, and you know what to look for when you're looking at, like, a EQ. Let me just bring up an EQ. So you would know... Um, I just wanted to bring up an empty one, but either way, you know that's in the highs and you know your low tones right here. So you should be able to distinguish. But when it gets to like, you know, having a lot of different sounds in the mix, it may get hard to do that. So 
I came up with ways for myself. Like this is um I so this is the trick. I use Imager. It's so pretty much I'm replicating Fab Filter. For many of you guys that don't know what that is, is like I don't even know what it is like specifically, so I'm not gonna speak too much on it, but I see that you could like solo individual bands inside the EQ. So you could solo the mids, you could solo the highs, you could solo the um you, you get me, you could solo shit. So but I realized you could do that in an imager. You feel me? Like, I c okay, I'm gonna just play the beat. So I'm gonna solo the mids. I could solo, well. <laughs> I meant solo the lows. So I just solo the lows. Now this is the mid solo. High mids. And then your high frequencies. So. Not realizing before, okay, you know, that's just an imager. But now nah, you got to start thinking outside the box. So when it comes to like... I use this for leveling and I use this for EQ and I'm going to show you both techniques. So let's say you had your piano. Um, I'm going to solo everything else. Yes, people, I know I could just right click and press solo, but I'm not trying to turn off my mic and shit. So don't don't be quick to assume. All right. I'm going to just start over with EQ. Alright, <laughs> this is one of my favorite melodies, so I, I just wanted to play out a little, especially right here. Anyways, <laughs> so you can hear there's a um, low end, a lot of bass in it. And if you can't really d distinguish that, like if you're really a beginner, this is a good method for you. This is a good method overall because I still use this method for everything. Um, Go to your imager. Make sure the imager is on a master um, channel. And if you don't have Isotope, l let me just speak two things on this. If you don't have Isotope, definitely get it. And don't tell me that, oh, you don't have money. Or, dude, find a way. Stop making yourself um, helpless. Like, try to get your money up. Like, you can't be a broke producer. A lot of you guys are trying to focus on being a producer and you're not making any money and you're complaining and you're asking for all these free um shit. Trust me, if you're trying to be in the game, you're going to need some high quality shit. The free shit could only get you so far. And yeah, you can learn sound designs and there's always a loophole to get around s certain things. But you don't only, you don't always want to take the long road. Sometimes you just really want to get to that, you know, convenience. Time is everything. So you don't want to be wasting time trying to get um figure out sound design and then blah blah blah. Especially if that's not the route you're trying to go. So get Isotope. Um, second, there's a way where you could solo the bands with Patcher, um, Fruity Patcher. You should be able to emulate um the Isotope plugin, just like how I'm pretty much emulating the um Fab Filter. Um, and I'll probably like watch a couple um videos and try to learn how to do that with the patcher and then make a video for you guys on that but for now we're going to use imager and i'm solo the bands all right so you guys is not going to be able to um hear me um but just turn up your headphones and listen to the low frequencies Hi, right, so if you guys watch my other video when I told you um you see how the bass was just moving up so much that means the bass has a lot of stereo and that could clutter up your mix so you definitely want to put your bass in mono first then next this is how you could get a perfect EQ cut of your low end. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to 
solo the low end and then I'm going to cut out all the um, bass. And this is how you know you're really cutting out the bass and not just guessing with your ears. Like I said, your ears can trick you sometimes. Even this boost I made, you can even hear it. Just, uh, just to show you guys. Y'all can hear that shit, right? So now, let me show you. See, now that sounds a lot better. Um, and now I can see and hear that I cut out the bass, like I really cut out the bass, not this, you know, put it over here because I see the fundamental frequency starts over here, so I'm cutting out some of it. No, I cut out to the point where, you know, there's not um, really any bass. And the way I did it, I just showed you that when you solo the band, now you could understand like really where to cut is pretty much what I'm trying to get now and you could just do that with everything else like if you're trying to get your um if you have a lot of highs let me see if there's a lot of highs in this guitar okay so there's highs in this guitar let's let's See, and there's also bass in that guitar that you probably wouldn't have heard if you um didn't solo the band. So I could even cut out some of the guitar. I ain't going to do that because you guys understand where I'm getting to now. So um, let's see about the highs. Let's see what's going on with the highs. Now I can find the shit that's like piercing. So it's like all that piercing shit. Okay. Now you can f this is see this technique. You can find the frequencies that is piercing that most of you guys probably won't be able to hear when all the sounds are in together and shit. Look how much better that sounds. Sorry, this is just my, one of my favorite melodies. So, pretty much, that's the EQ part. And just keep in mind, too, at the same time, you don't want to cut so much. You know, it's just, this is just an easy way to find the frequency that you're looking for, is, is how I would put it. If you have Fab Filter, then great, you know. A lot of people don't have that. And I, I don't even have that shit, so... Not that I even want it because now that I know I could just do it with Isotope. And even though I spoke about um, convenience and doing things a bit faster, this, doing this route with Isotope is not slowing down the process because I'm still posted, I'm still using Isotope either way. So, but let's show you how to level with this. Now, you could level, the crazy thing is, so. Let's say you had like <laughs> end up cutting off my mic. Let's say you had your highs and you just don't know what's clashing. Like, let's just play the highs. Hold on, had that timer go off and shit. I don't be trying to make my videos too long. But this video I just really went to just do this because this is a tip that I, is very helpful. Well, there's not too many things clashing, but let's. Okay, so now. 
Now we're listening to the highs solo, and I can hear the piano. See, I'm not going to go too in depth in this. I'll probably save the value for a whole nother video because, like I said, I don't be trying to make these videos too long, but you can hear that that snare is really taking over that high frequency. Even though it's hidden in its own part. See, that sounds a lot better when I cut it back. And then now, because it's all about context. Even though if it was playing all at the same time, then that's a good technique. But even also when it's not playing at the same time, it's still a good technique. Because remember, it's a flow. You know, the snare is still... Like, the way I could explain this is like, it's just a flow, man. Like, I don't know how else to really um, put that. It's just really a flow. Like, it just sounds better when the snare is not hidden at that high point. It's like, it kind of levels and balance out the mix because everything is not, so, one thing is not super high and shit. They all kind of leveled. Um, I'll probably go more detail into how to like level your mix using Isotope and someone in the band. So yeah, I'll just save that for another video. But if you like this video, like and subscribe like always. Share with your um, producer friends if this was a very helpful tip for you. So there you go. Have a nice day.